All right, so we're back for another deep dive. Mm. And uh, today, we're heading over to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia for the launch of their new metro system. Wow. It is uh, a huge development. It's a really interesting story. And we have got articles here nice. that are going to give us all the ins and outs of how this ambitious project has come to be. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. And you know what? It has it all. You've got massive scale. We're talking cutting edge technology yeah. and the potential to actually like reshape the whole city. It's a great case study. I mean, mm -hmm. Riyadh is on the fast track mm -hmm. to becoming this like global hub. Right. And with the population growing so rapidly, they had to do something about the traffic congestion. Right. It was becoming a major obstacle. Yeah. So this metro system is like a bold attempt to yeah. deal with that. Totally. Let's unpack this a little bit. The scale of this thing is unbelievable. It's massive. It's 176 kilometers of track. Wow. 85 stations. Yeah. And it can move yeah. 1.2 million passengers per day in this first phase alone. That's wild. I mean, that's like, if you took the population of insert relatable major city population here and put them all on the metro every day. Right. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just about moving people around. Right. It's also tied to Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 plan. Right. This is like their national strategy to diversify their economy. Right. And get away from that reliance on oil. Mm -hmm. So the metro is like a real, like, physical symbol yeah. of their dedication to modernization and sustainable development. It's absolutely. So this week, they're opening the first three lines. Nice. The Al Aruba to Al Bathala line. Okay. The King Khalid International Airport rug line. Okay. And then the one that runs along the intersection of Abdul Rahman bin Auf and Sheikh Hassan bin Hussein streets. Got it. The rest of the lines will be opening in mid-December. Wow. But, okay, this is what's really interesting to me. Yeah. The technology behind it. What about it? Driverless trains. How does that even work? It's amazing. I... So these trains have like this sophisticated system uh -huh. of sensors and cameras and computer algorithms okay. that allow them to navigate the tracks themselves. Wow. You know? So no driver. No driver. Wow. They can like detect obstacles. Yeah. They can maintain a safe distance and they can adjust speed and braking mm -hmm. super precisely. Mm. So it's like taking human error right out of the equation. That makes a lot of sense. So it's safer and more efficient. Yeah, exactly. But what about safeguards? How do they ensure passenger safety yeah. if there's no one at the controls? Like what happens in case of an emergency? Well, each train is constantly being monitored. Oh, okay. From a central control center. Okay. And they have lots of backup systems. Okay. So there are emergency brakes and communication systems right. and personnel who are trained and ready to respond if something happens. So it is designed to be really reliable. Oh, yeah. And this this driverless technology has already been proven in other places around the world. Totally. It's really interesting. And it's not just the driverless aspect. They're packed with all these energy-efficient features, too. That's right. They have regenerative braking. Oh, right. Which, like, captures energy when the train breaks. Wow. And feeds it back into the system. That's so cool. And then lots of the stations have solar panels mm -hmm. to generate clean electricity. Nice. So they really are trying to make it sustainable. Yeah, Riyadh really wants to be like a model mm -hmm. for sustainable urban development. I can see that. Yeah. Okay, but now for the, the elephant in the room. What's that? The co This project costs $22.5 billion. Yeah, that is a big price tag. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. So, you know, it raises some questions about yeah. whether or not it's financially viable. Right. Will it make enough money right. to justify the cost? No, Ticket prices haven't been announced yet. Right. But, you know, authorities are under pressure to keep them affordable. Yeah. Because they want people to stop driving their cars. It's and that's not going to happen if the metro is too expensive. That is such a good point. Accessibility and affordability mm. are so important if they want to actually make a difference oh, yeah. in the traffic congestion. Yeah. This project has been in development for over a decade. Really? So there must have been a ton of hurdles along the way. Oh, for sure. I mean, coordinating a project this big yeah. with all the different co contractors and, you know, mm -hmm. navigating all the complex engineering and then all the disruption to the city during construction. Yeah. That's a lot. Absolutely. And then on top of all that, the COVID pandemic. Right. You know, that definitely added another layer of complexity yeah, for to the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, they have these mega projects. You know, they're never really smooth sailing. Right. But they've done it. They got this metro system going. I know. It's really exciting. So now the question is, yeah. will it actually live up to all the hype? Right. 
will it transform Riyadh? Right. Will it actually solve their traffic problems? Yeah. It's a big question. It is. It is a big question. It's really exciting to think about how it could impact daily life for the people of Riyadh. Oh, yeah. Imagine just zipping across town. Yeah. No traffic. No problem. Right. That could be huge for commuters and businesses. Totally. Like the whole quality of life in the city could change. Yeah. It could be totally transformative. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. It's not a guaranteed success. Right. Affordable fares are great, but that's not the whole story. Right. This metro system yeah. needs to connect with other transportation. Okay. Buses, taxis, ride sharing. Right. If it's not easy to get around, yeah. people might just stick with their cars right. out of habit or, you know, because they have to. It's all about that integrated transportation network. Totally. And it's not even just about convenience. Right. There's also the social and economic side of things to consider. Oh, yeah, for sure. How will this metro affect different income groups? I mean, will it help to even things out between different neighborhoods? Or will it actually make existing inequalities worse? Yeah. That's a really important point. You yeah. Know, these mega projects, sometimes yeah. they end up benefiting the wealthy residents more right. than lower income communities. Right. And if the metro isn't accessible to everyone, yeah. it could actually make that gap between the haves and have nots even bigger. Right. So it's more than just building new trains and stations. Exactly. It's about making sure everyone can access it yeah. and creating a system that works for everyone. Absolutely. So we've talked about the energy efficient features. Right. But what about the bigger picture of sustainability? Yeah. So this metro system is a key part of mm -hmm. Riyadh's plan to become a more sustainable and eco-friendly city. Okay. You know, by getting people out of their cars and onto the metro. Yeah. They're hoping to reduce carbon emissions and improve air quality. That makes sense. But we have to remember that building a metro system also has an impact on the environment. Right. Of course. Construction takes resources and energy, yeah. and there's always a chance of disrupting ecosystems. So it's about finding that balance. Exactly. Trying to minimize the negative effects yeah. while maximizing the long-term benefits. Right. Okay, so let's talk about money for a second. Okay. We know this project cost a ton. It did. But what about the return on that investment? Well, that's a tricky question. Okay. There are the obvious economic benefits. Right. Like creating jobs during construction. Right and then the money they make from fares. Okay. But then there are these indirect benefits too. Like what? Well, like better transportation can attract businesses, mm -hmm. it can increase property values, right. and it can make the whole economy more productive. So it's like this ripple effect that spreads positive economic impact sure, throughout yeah. the city. Yeah. But there are also risks. For sure. What if they don't get as many riders as they're expecting? Yeah. Could this whole project end up being a financial burden on the city? That's definitely a valid concern. Yeah. You know, these mega projects, they often have cost overruns and mm. unexpected challenges. Uh, right. So the success of the metro yeah. really depends on a lot of things. Yeah. Like making sure they have accurate projections about how many people will ride it, mm -hmm. making sure it runs efficiently, and yeah. being able to adapt to changing needs. Okay. So it's a gamble, it but a calculated one. Exactly. They're betting on the future. Yeah. And we'll just have to see if it pays off. Only time will tell. So can we go back to the driverless technology for a minute? Sure. I'm still a little fuzzy on how it all works. Yeah. What are you curious about? Well, like, how do the trains know where to go? Okay. Is there like a virtual map or something? Yeah. So each train has this really accurate GPS system. Okay. And a digital map of the whole network. Ah. Uh, and they use a combination of sensors, cameras, and laser scanners. Okay. To constantly monitor their surroundings and look for any obstacles or hazards. Wow. Yeah. So they're always scanning the environment and yeah. adjusting their course as needed. Exactly. That's wild. Yeah. And if something unexpected happens, yeah. like something's on the tracks, yeah. the train's safety systems kick in automatically. All right. It'll either slow down or come to a complete stop, right. depending on how serious the situation is. Okay. And the control center gets alerted right away, mm -hmm. and they can take over manually if they need to. Oh, wow. That's reassuring. Yeah. It sounds like they really have thought of everything to keep passengers safe. They've tried to. But even with all that, I mean, there's still some risk, right? Well, of course, you can never eliminate risk completely. Right. You know, there's always the possibility of something unexpected happening. Right. Or a technical glitch. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> driverless technology is it been tested so much, mm. and it's actually proven to be really safe. Okay. In a lot of ways, it's actually safer than having a human driver. 
Okay. Because you take away the human error. You take away the fatigue. Right. You take away the distractions. So it's like having a computer that's always analyzing the situation. Exactly. And making decisions in real time based on all this data. That's right. That's really incredible. Yeah. And this technology is always getting better. Wow. As they collect more data and analyze it, yeah. these systems become even more sophisticated and more reliable. That's pretty amazing. So not just for transportation, but for all kinds of stuff. Yeah, who knows what the future holds. Right. But for now, let's stick with Riyadh. Okay. This metro system is a big investment in their future. Huge investment. How do you think it will change the lives of the people who live there? That's a tough one to predict. Yeah. But I think it could be really transformative. In what way? <sighs> well, imagine if it's easy to get to jobs and education and health care yeah, yeah. and cultural events. Right. No matter where you live in the city. Mm -hmm. That could open up so many opportunities yeah. for people who might have been held back because of transportation problems in the past. Right. It could be a driver for social and economic mobility. Exactly. But like we talked about before, there are also potential downsides. Yeah, for sure. Will everyone benefit equally? Right. Will it create new divisions yeah. or make existing ones worse? Yeah. Those are all really important things to consider. Right. Like we said earlier, the key is going to be... Yeah making sure everyone can access the metro and afford to ride it. Right. The people in charge need to really think about the needs of all the residents mm -hmm. and design a system that works for the whole community. Right. Not just a select few. Exactly. It's about creating a system that includes everybody yeah. and benefits everyone. Absolutely. And it's not just about today. Right. This metro is also a statement about what Riyadh wants to be in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. It shows how ambitious they are. Yeah. They want to be a global hub. Right. A modern and sustainable city. Mm -hmm. That's right up there with the best in the world. It's a pretty bold statement. It is. And you know, it's a really interesting case study for other cities. Oh, for sure. That are facing similar challenges. Totally. Like traffic congestion, population growth, and the need for sustainable solutions. Yeah, this is something that cities all over the world are dealing with. This is a fascinating story to follow, but let's, uh, let's bring it back to our listeners for a second. Why should anyone care? Yeah, good point. About a metro system thousands of miles away. Well, it's not just a local story. Hmm. Riyadh's facing challenges that cities all over the world are dealing with. Like what? I mean, traffic congestion, rapid population growth, and the need for sustainable solutions. This is a global issue. Right. So what they're doing with this metro, yeah. it's like a sneak peek at the future of transportation in the cities. Exactly. The things they get right and the mistakes they make <laughs> will be valuable lessons yeah. for other cities yeah. that are trying to solve the same problems. So we can learn from them. Totally. Yeah. Whether it's about technology or money, right. social impact or the environment, yeah. there's a lot to learn from watching this project unfold. It's like we're all watching this giant experiment in real time. Exactly. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So we've talked about the potential benefits. Yeah. But what about the potential downsides? Okay. Are there any unintended consequences that we should be thinking about? Well, you know, even with the best intentions, there's always a chance that things won't go exactly as planned. Right. For example, if the metro leads to a lot of development along its routes, yeah. it could push up property values right. and force out lower income residents. That's a good point. Yeah, that's something the city planners need to be aware of mm -hmm. and try to prevent. So it's not just about building a metro. Right. It's about managing the effects it has and making sure everyone benefits fairly. Exactly. Another thing to consider is the impact on local businesses. Oh, yeah. If the metro makes it easier to travel to different parts of the city, it could hurt businesses that rely on people in the neighborhood. Interesting. So finding that balance between progress and preserving what makes a neighborhood unique. Yeah. It's always a challenge. It is a tough one. And it's not just about the physical stuff either. Right. There's the social and cultural impact too. Oh yeah, for sure. How will this metro change how people interact with their city? That's a great question. Yeah. Will it bring people from different neighborhoods together? Yeah. Or will it create new divisions by changing how people move around and how businesses operate? Hmm. Those are questions that will keep sociologists and anthropologists busy for years to come. It's true. It's like watching a new urban landscape being born. Yeah. And it'll be fascinating to see how it all evolves. I agree. So let's zoom out for a second and look at the bigger picture. Okay. This metro system is just one part of a much larger plan, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's part of Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030. Right. 
This is their big plan for the future. Hmm. They're putting a ton of money into infrastructure, technology, and education. Wow. And it's all about creating a more diverse and dynamic economy. So the metro is like a symbol of that. Exactly. It's a way of showing the world that Riyadh is a city on the rise. Yeah. A major player on the global stage. It's really a story that's just beginning. We're just at the start of it all. Right. The real impact of this metro system yeah. will unfold over the next few years, even decades. It's going to be fascinating to watch. To see how it changes the city, the economy, people's lives. I can't wait. We've covered so much in this deep dive. We have. From driverless trains to the social and economic implications. It's a big topic. It is, but it all boils down to human ingenuity and ambition. Yeah. This drive to create progress. That's what it's all about. It's a story that can inspire us all. I think so. No matter where we live. Absolutely. That's a great place to wrap things up. Listeners, we encourage you to keep an eye on this story as it develops. It should be interesting. It's a reminder that we're building the future right now. Mm -hmm. And it's up to all of us to shape it. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep.